Hi guys, um, this video forms part of the Electrotechniques 143 course at Stellenbosch University and I just want to recap um, something about source transformations that was featured in one of your tutorials. If I can quickly flip my screen over here, uh, see if I can find it, the, the particular question. And uh, just uh, give me a, section, a second. It is this one. Okay, so what we what you had is you had this question over here in the tutorial, and <coughs> the key to solving it was to remove this 16 ohm resistor that is in series with the current source, and also this 260 ohm resistor that's in parallel with this 520 volt. And it says use source transformations to find V0. So obviously we don't have a source transformation for this one and for this one, but if you remove those, then you see you've got a nice case where you've got a, a, a current source in parallel with the resistor, and you can use source transformations to simplify this into a, an equivalent voltage source with the series resistor. Okay, so how and why can we leave out this 16 ohm resistor and also this 260 ohm uh, resistor? All right, so let me get back to my, my explanation over here. All right, so what we have is um, we've got, essentially we've got a circuit that looks like this, um, where we've got a, res uh, a voltage source, Vs, that's in parallel with this resistor RP that's in series again with this resistor R. So if you can, obviously as you can see, if we if we leave out this, um, this resistor, let me just get something where I can cover it out. Give me a second. So if I can, 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 can remove this resistor over here, right? If I can remove that, well, then I essentially have a case that is similar. This this looks similar to my normal source transformation case, which is over here, that I can transform into something like this, and vice versa. Remember, this is what we call a bilateral transformation, and we can transform between these two cases using this um, equation over here. We derived this in class, and it's also very clearly stipulated in your textbook. So just review that section. I think it was um, lecture 15 in the, in the course. But um, yeah, just review that to make sure you understand why you can switch between these two cases. But let's see how can we and why can we now essentially remove this resistor s to make things easier for us? Okay, so how is this equivalent to this? So what we're going to do is we're going to, to prove that, we're going to use similar th uh, uh, concept as we used to prove that this is equivalent to this. So what we're going to do here is we are going to add a load resistor. Let's add a load resistor over the terminals over here. Okay, RL. So the same load resistor is added over terminals A and B. Here's terminals A, that's terminal B, so that's terminal A and B. We have the same load resistor RL, and what we're going to calculate is we are going to calculate the currents flowing through these load resistors in both cases. And if we can si say that the, these currents are the, um, the same in both cases, well, then we've got. Um, then we've essentially proven the um, the equivalence over here that this circuit is equivalent to this circuit. So let's calculate. Looking at this circuit, let's calculate I L. As we can see, I L the voltage over this resistor over here on this node is V S, and this entire voltage is just falling over these resistors over here. All right, so so I L in this case can be calculated using Ohm's law. I L is equal to this voltage V S divided by the sum of these two resistors. So it's R plus R L. Okay, so that's my first expression. Let's create a little bit of a separation over here. So what is um, what is this current I L if I've got a circuit that looks like this? Well, it's again. I L is equal to this voltage, V S divided by the sum of these resistors R plus R L, and as you can see, we've got exactly the same expressions for the current I L, which means that these circuits are now equivalent to each other. Excellent. Okay, 
What's the second case that we can also um, look at? Well, the second case that we should be looking at here is <coughs> what happens if we now have uh, an additional series resistor with uh, with our our current source and our parallel resistor over here. So essentially what I'm asking you is, is something that looks like this. IS, let me just quickly draw it. RS, remember with my R variable over here, is that my terminals A and B, is this equivalent to something that looks like this? Just move that up. So this equivalent to something that looks just like this. My S. A. B. Okay, so. And this is R. How am I going to, to, to prove that or to calculate that? Well, same thing applies. If I, oh, sorry, let me just move that a little bit so that you guys can see the this clearly, let's zoom, okay, okay, so how are we going to do this? Same thing, we're going to calculate the current flowing through a load resistor over here, or L, my L, so let's do this. On this side, let's get, what is IL, what's a, um, how can we calculate IL in this case? Well, we can use a number of a number of methods. Probably the simplest would be, I know that IS is flowing just through this point, this resistor over here, and it's dividing between these two branches. And there's only two resistors. Then I can use an equation for um, current division, which says that IL is equal to my source current, right? Times the resistor R, the other resistor R, divided by the sum of RL. Remember, so in this equation, if I want to calculate the current flowing through a particular resistor, then it's the um, the other resistor here, R in the other branch, divided by the sum of the two resistors. This equation is only valid for the case of two simple resistors. Go through the derivation of it again, and also take note of the case where you have n resistors in parallel. Right, but in any case, so this is the current for this particular case flowing through the load resistor. What is the what is the current flowing through the load resistor in this case? Well, we have I L is equal to same thing I S divided by R over R plus R L, and as we can see, these two are equal. So again we've now proven that this form is equivalent to this form over here. And you can, when you get a calc when you get a, a, a problem, like the one shown in the tutorial, let's see if we can find it again, like this one over here, you can complete this by omitting this resistor and this resistor. So this resistor is in series for this particular case with this current source. This resistor is in parallel with this voltage source. Okay, I hope that helps guys. Please ask me if, um, remember to ask us if something is unclear. The more questions you ask, um, if you don't understand, the better your understanding of the work will become. Okay, thank you.